Evening and welcome to the WDSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Tonight we continue our Commitment 2021 debates. Up tonight, the race for Orleans Parish Sheriff. It's a big job in New Orleans. They run the jail, they run courthouse security, and have other security functions in the city of New Orleans. There are five people who qualify for this race. Four of them are here tonight. All five were invited. They are in alphabetical order, Quentin Brown, an independent. The incumbent, Sheriff Marlon Gussman, a Democrat. Janet Hayes, no party affiliation. And then Susan Hudson, also a Democrat. Thank you all for being here. Good luck to everybody on election day. We're gonna do a 30 second opening statement. We go alphabetically, Mr. Brown, you have 30 seconds to make an opening statement. How you doing? I'm Quentin Brown. I know if all of you have seen my signs, it say no BS. Quentin Brown for sheriff, I care. I really care. If a man hasn't discovered something that he would die for, he isn't fit to live. I have discovered to be your next sheriff. The crime in this city is outrageous. And I think the sheriff, I think a sheriff is elected to serve the people in the jail and outside the jail. We are terrified to go out our house at night. And I promise you, if I'm your next sheriff, you won't be terrified again. and You won't be moving because of the crime in New Orleans. Thank you very much, Sheriff Gusman. You have 30 seconds to make an opening statement and let people know why you deserve another term in office. Thank you, Travers. You know, when I was elected, there were 13 deteriorated, dilapidated jails. Now we have a direct supervision facility, modern with over 900 cameras. We employ body-worn cameras. We have a school, uh, an accredited school with the Louisiana Department of Education, the Travis Hill School, uh, where we've awarded 39 diplomas. Uh, we have a day reporting center that helps people not return to jail. We have a reentry program. We have a transitional work program that gives people jobs before they get out. We have, well, good. thank you, Sheriff. You were right at 30 seconds. We'll have a lot more with you. Ms. Hayes, you have 30 seconds to make an opening statement. Thank you so much, Travers. I'm Janet Hayes. A lot of people remember me from the Safe Charity Hospital fight. I'm a fighter for people. I'm an advocate for alternatives to incarceration, homelessness, reoffense, chronic mental illness and addiction. I'm also an innovator. I'm a community leader and a problem solver working for a meaningful change. I began my own nonprofit organization and I specialize in removing barriers to care for people living with untreated and undertreated serious mental illnesses of which we have an epidemic in this system. We also have an epidemic of crime. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Hudson. 30 seconds for an opening statement. Thank you, Travers. My name is Susan Hudson. I'm the former independent police monitor and I'm running for Orleans Parish Sheriff on a platform of change that includes the three C's of corrections, care, custody, and control. I believe in setting up people to succeed and not to fail. Well, that doesn't happen right now. Well, we need to flip that script. We're gonna value Orleans Parish Sheriff employees help incarcerated persons see a light and not exploit them on TV reality shows and listens to our community's leadership for us all truly to be safe and secure. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hudson. We're gonna start this question with you. 30 seconds. The most recent federal monitors report says conditions at the jail have regressed and posters still left unmanned while deputies take breaks. After all these years, why is this still an issue and what would you do to correct it in 30 seconds? Uh, this would be my third consent decree once I become the sheriff. And what I know about um, consent decrees from LAPD and NOPD is that it's all about the leadership. When a leader embraces the reforms, the consent decree will be complied with. It's not rocket science. It's the minimum constitutional standard. And we should have been done with this after eight long years. The LAPD with 10,000 officers only took 10, uh, nine years to be completed. So we need to get a new sheriff, number one, and then we won't have to play, pay a court monitor while the sheriff sidelined for four long years because the judge removes them from office. Ms. Hayes, same question. The federal monitors in the most recent report criticized deteriorating conditions at the jail. If elected, what would you do to reform that? Well, we need to get out of the consent decree to move forward with, with real changes that we want to make in the jail. I plan to exercise full power of the sheriff's, sheriff's office to initiate investigations to corruption and rooting out wrongdoing. A leader is only as good as the people who work for them and rooting out corruption means workplace transparency demonstrated through communication, respect and admitting wrongs and regular feedback. No one should feel that, that they have to- Extortion on the record. 
the right to feed their kids. If uh, when there's wrongdoing going in, on in the jail, the uh, leader needs to be willing to listen, to work with uh, employees and to- um, Okay. okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll have plenty more with you. Sheriff Gusman, same question. The monitors say that conditions inside the jail have regressed. That's their term and posts are still left unmanned. If reelected, how do you fix that? And how does that still happen in 30 seconds? Well, first, the question is a distortion of the record. Uh, we're more than 96% compliant uh, with the consent decree. Uh, we're in the final stages of it. And, and look, these monitors are nitpicky. Uh, they're always trying to pick out a little something here and there, and that's how they keep their job. Uh, this isn't about monitoring. This is about making sure that we're delivering uh, safety, uh, not only to the people that work here, but also to the people that reside here. Uh, we've worked hard. Uh, and this is a direct supervision facility uh, where we have over 900 cameras and we're doing a great job at it. All right, Mr. Brown, same question. You're going to wrap us up on this one. Talk about the conditions. Monitors say they've regressed and deputies post or, post or unmanned in 30 seconds. How do you fix that if you're elected? It's leadership. And that's what I would be, a leadership. I care. I will get on these deputies and make sure they're doing their job. This man has built a $150 million facility, and it looks like the Marriott in a Sheraton Hotel. Now it's time to fix it. I think the, 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 the deputies think they got hotel rooms in there. So it's time to make it right and do it and fix it and, and get good people in there that care about their job. And then we talk about all this, what we're going to do, all this, all this, everything he's doing, everything. It, nothing is being done in there if they got if he's 96 percent okay we're going to come back to you miss hayes we're going to start this question with you monitors also say that inmates are making weapons and overdosing on illegal drugs if you're elected how do you try to fix those problems in 30 seconds those problems are really due to staff shortages that these their concern is about pay benefits safety and security uh, in the uh, so, uh, the, sometimes they're underappreciated. Uh, they need to be listened to, and their lives, sh they shouldn't feel that their lives are um, in immediate, nearly danger every day that they go to work. So, we need funding to increase deputy pay and also increase uh, workforce in the jail. So, uh, that's going to be finding the money, and I know where to find the money. Hopefully, All right, we'll Sher Sheriff Gusman, let's talk about you. The federal monitor say inmates are making illegal weapons and overdosing inside the jail. If you're reelected, how do you correct those problems that monitors are pointing out? Look, again, uh, we work every day. Uh, contraband is one of the hardest things you have. Uh, contraband's present in every jail. Uh, we work hard to keep it out. Uh, that's why we have to stay monitoring, stay vigilant. Uh, this is, again, some nitpicking stuff. Uh, uh, there's nothing nitpicking about someone when they, when they illegally bring in drugs. Uh, but we're working real hard to combat that. And they're only picking out the, the small things. You know, we're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. Mr. Brown, same question. What is your plan for those issues pointed out by the monitor in 30 seconds? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If the monitor know what he, he, they're talking about, they must be right. They shouldn't have drugs and put and, and, and guns and stuff inside their uh, telephones and stuff in there. That's why I rained the first time I say people see showing guns, shooting dice and, and smoking weed and everything. I would be at the front doorstep. I would do a shakedown as soon as I'm elected, make sure everything is clear. And when I'm elected, I was about to stand out there and appoint people and make sure that everything is not getting in the jail or out. And I have cameras on every angle to make sure nothing is going in the right. jail and coming okay. out of jail. We'll come back to you, Ms. Hudson. You can wrap us up on that question. Drug overdoses, illegal weapons in the facility. How, what is your plan in 30 seconds to, to reform that? Well, first of all, this is not nitpicking. Over 67 people have died over the sheriff's tenure, a lot of them from overdoses. And on average, we know that those who die of overdoses have been in jail for at least six months before they die. We don't know that from the sheriff because he's not transparent with the information. But we know that from our community leaders who have been watching and bird dogging in the jail and checking out these issues. This is a leadership issue. It's about employees, but it's about who's leading them, who's training them, who's holding them accountable for their work. Really quickly, in about 10 seconds, Sheriff, if you want to respond to that, since she did mention you, by in about 10 seconds, if you can respond to that. Unsupported, uh, erroneous allegations, uh, quote from so-called outside sources. Uh, we've been totally transparent. That's one of our core values. All right. 
We're going to start this question with you. Speaking of transparency, you want to expand the jail. You feel that's necessary. City Hall has been fighting with you. The project is moving forward. Why is a jail expansion needed right now in about 30 seconds? First, it's not a jail expansion. Uh, this jail is not complete. Uh, we uh, replaced what we had in certain facilities. Remember, I said we had 13 different jails. Uh, we replaced some parts of it. We still need a visitation center for family and attorneys, and we still need a mental and mental health facility to help people that have mental illnesses uh, have the right access to care. And we also need a laundry. This is not an expansion. That's something that's been characterized erroneously uh, by people that don't want to see it right. We don't need retrofit. We don't need uh, any of that. We need to do it right. All right, Mr. Brown, same question. What is your plan when it comes to the jail expansion or just right-sizing the jail, as the sheriff said? What's your I plan? Did, I, I, I disapprove it because it wasn't put up to the people for the vote. I say I'm for the people, with the people, and by the people. Everything should be put up for a vote. This is unnecessary spending. You can you got all these dilapidated, all these damaged, damaged buildings in New Orleans. You can't put something down in New Orleans East to, for, for, for people for mental illness or something like that. Man, you're just trying to spend more money and everything, and then we don't need it. So we we'll put the, we'll put it up for the people for the vote, and I'll try my best to stop it. All right, Miss Hudson, same question for you. What is your plan for jail expansion if you're elected? by the people in, city, in the city of New Orleans in 30 seconds. Uh, absolutely. As Quentin said, the community did not approve this and is against this. So I'm going to listen to our community. I am against phase three. Buildings do not provide care. People provide care. We need help, not handcuffs. And the jail is only a little over half full and there are not enough deputies to run that. Who's going to run this new facility? If you build it, they will fill it. It is an expansion of the incarceration footprint. We have to help those folks retrofit the jail and make sure we keep people safe. All right, Ms. Hayes, you're going to wrap us up on this one in 30 seconds. How do you feel about the jail expansion? What is your plan if you're elected in 30 seconds? Well, this is really my area of expertise, and I want to be clear that that money is meant for people with untreated serious mental illnesses who have been forced into the criminal justice system by mental health laws that require damage. They have committed serious crimes, but it's not always their fault. And I don't believe that they should be in a jail at all. I don't think that an alternative to a phase two jail. You don't put them in jail. They come to you money to build a forensic hospital in our community to reduce the redundancies of people having to uh, stay in the jail, be transferred up to Jackson, Louisiana for competency restoration and back and forth to the jail. It just makes sense. A serious mental illness population is the most expensive in that we pay for. Let's get them under the health department, not the correct department. And all of a sudden we got a lot of money. And, and to, a lot to, of All right. We could talk all day about this issue. It's, it, this it's issue, it's a big one. Mr. Brown, we're going to start this question with you. Hiring cops around the country and law enforcement officers is a struggle. All departments are short staffed right now. If you're elected in 30 seconds, what is your plan to hire more sheriff's deputies? What I would do, I'll try to get some of those police officers. I think if I can give them the most raise and get better pay, they might want to come work for me. Everybody's leaving because they can't afford child care and everything. So if we have to deal with this expansion or whatever they want to call it, an extra building, whatever, if they want to call it that, I'll put a daycare center in there to try to help the deputies where they can don't have to pay for daycare and that'd be one burden off them. And then let's attract more deputies to come to New Orleans and give them work with other businesses, give them free food, give them anything. Yeah. These people are saving our lives and okay. the crime is bad in New Orleans. All right, Ms. Hudson, Ms. Hudson had a good point. She sent me a message. If we could ever, everybody just mute your mics or just remain silent when some of your opponents are talking, that would be ideal. Ms. Hudson, in 30 seconds, what is your plan to staff up properly and get more sheriff's deputies in the city of New Orleans if you're elected? Well, um, as I'm walking the streets and talking to folks every day, I'm talking to ex-deputies and current deputies, and they say they want change because, again, it's about leadership. Lawsuit after lawsuit by people who've been employed there for either sexual harassment, retaliation, some other issue not being supported. We have to support them with training, support them with leadership, support them with proper pay and benefits. We have to be better for them. We know they'll come back once the leadership has changed. Ms. Hayes, same question. What is your plan, if elected, to staff up and get more deputies hired in Orleans Parish in 30 seconds? 
Well, I agree with Ms. Hudson. Um, and also, I believe that we need to increase pay for deputies. And the way we're going to do that is to find where the money is that we're wasting right now. Again, the seriously mentally ill population in the jail is the most expensive, even though they're the smallest. But if we get them out of that, out of the Department of Corrections and into the proper treatment and care under the psychiatrist, we no longer need WellPath. We then can contract with that hospital to provide security, laundry, and meals and bring money into the jail. That can be used to increase deputy pay as well as building a reentry center, which we know that we need. So we're not dropping people off a cliff every time they're discharged from the jail. I, I wish we could get to a lot more. We have one final question that we're going to let y'all make closing statements so you can sell yourselves to the viewers that are watching us. Ms. Hudson, we're back to you. In 30 seconds, a quick 30 I don't think seconds. I, hopefully. That question. I didn't answer that question. Oh, I'm sorry, Sheriff. Sheriff, I apologize. Thank you. In 30 Thanks. seconds, what is your plan to hire more deputies if you're reelected? I do apologize, Sheriff. Thank you very yeah. much. Okay. Well, let's start off with the facts first. Uh, not, not just reading some report. I've more than doubled the pay since I've been elected. And that's not enough. So we work every day to make sure that we can get more pay. Uh, it's about working conditions. It's about making sure people can come to work at a decent place and be rewarded while they're there. As you pointed out, law enforcement across this nation uh, is having a difficult time hiring people. This is tough work. It's not easy work. We work 12 hour shifts. We work on holidays. We work every day of the year. But we're going to keep working hard to make sure that we can get the qualified people because this work isn't for everybody. All right. Thank you, Sheriff. I'm sorry again for, for skipping you. Thank you for correcting me and pointing that out. Ms. Hudson, in about 10 seconds, if elected, what is the first thing you do as Sheriff? Your number one goal in about 10 seconds. Yeah, we're going to conduct a complete forensic audit of all the uh, monies that have come into and out of the jail. As Janet mentioned, we have to have a, be accountable for every single dollar. We have to see where we can make savings and use those savings to support our community. Ms. Hayes, same thing. If you're elected in about 10 seconds, what is the number one thing you do on day one if you're elected by the people? Yeah, I agree with uh, Ms. Hudson that, you know, um, the first thing we need to do is get our arms around the jail to find out uh, exactly what's uh, been going on, where our money is being spent, where it's being wasted, where it's being better spent, and on what uh, the operational manage managerial practices have been that have been problems in the past. All right, Sheriff, I'm not going to skip you this time. In about 10 seconds, if you're reelected, what is the number one thing you do on day one if you're reelected by the people in about 10 seconds? Uh, we're gonna make sure that those people with mental illnesses and medical needs are properly treated, as well as making sure that we have adequate visitation for families to be able to visit with their loved ones while they're here. You know, these, these people that are incarcerated, they're our friends, they're our neighbors, they're community members. All right, and Mr. Brown, in about 10 seconds, if you're elected, what's the number one thing you do on day one if you become sheriff in about 10 seconds? You're right, Mr. Brown, you're muted. If you could take your, okay. And like I said, I'm for the people and with the people and by the people. I would make sure, like you said, it's not an expansion. So what it isn't, it's, it's an extra project then. I will hold the extra project, try to talk to the governor, try to talk to the, the legislator and say if, what, what we can do to stop this from happening and see right. if we can I, use this money somewhere else. All right, we're gonna wrap up here. Closing statements, we're going in reverse order this time. Mr. Brown, we started with you. Ms. Hudson, you get to start us off 30 seconds. Closing statement, why you feel you're the best candidate. You can sell yourself to voters for 30 seconds here. We are tight on time, so I may have to wrap you up right at 30. Okay. Uh, thank you, Travers. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to be heard. I am the reform candidate for sheriff and I am all in. I resigned as the police monitor to be here for this community in this position. As a former prosecutor, defense attorney, assistant city attorney, and proud Tulane law grad, I have the knowledge, the experience, and the skills to comply with this consent decree after eight long years. And I will treat employees and those incarcerated humanely. It's time for change after 17 long years. We must do better. We can do better. And if not now, then when? Thank you, Ms. Hayes. 30 seconds to make a closing statement. 
Thanks, Travers. Well, first of all, I'm independent. I will not swap safety and quality of life for political agendas, nor will I swap funding for one population in favor of another. We need to take care of all. We need to work, work on both sides of the criminal justice system, not only to make things better in the jail for people who uh, do come in contact with the criminal justice system, but we also need to work on the outside to make sure that people that don't need to come into the criminal justice system aren't in the first place. I'm a fighter, I'm a doer, I have vision, I have the will, I have the experience to uh, a better and safer jail for a better and safer Thank you, Sheriff Gussman, 30 seconds to let voters know why you, de why you deserve another term in office. Thank you, Travers. I'm born and raised in this city uh, by parents who instilled a strong work ethic in me. I'm not some Johnny come lately, somebody who just decided they were gonna run for an office. Uh, I have a history of public service. We worked hard to make a difference here in this, in this jail. Uh, we transformed it. We're continuing to transform it. We're gonna make sure that we have all of the tools necessary to help people that were uh, incarcerated come out better than when they came in. And that's my commitment, that's my pledge, that's my record. Thank you, Sheriff. Mr. Brown, you get to wrap us up here, 30 seconds. Let people know why you feel you're the best candidate. I'm an independent candidate. I'm not taking no donations. I'm not even begging for no donations. I don't want any money from no organizations, no PACs or nothing. I'm a, I stand alone and I will be alone, but I will fight with the people to make sure this city is safe. That's why I've reigned for the past 20 years and I'm no Johnny come lately. I'm Mr. Quentin Aura Brown, the no BS man. Number three on the ballot, I want to be your next sheriff and send this man packing. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Quentin Brown, Janet Hayes, Susan Hudson, Sheriff Marlon Gussman, we appreciate your time. Election day is November 13th. They all have platforms on social media. You all can go look at them and find the latest on WDSU.com. For the hot seat, I'm Travers Mackle. Thanks for watching. Travers, thank you so much. The race for mayor is on in New Orleans. Mayor Latoya Cantrell is seeking re-election next month and has drawn 13 challengers. We interviewed the Democratic incumbent and the candidates seeking to unseat her. Those interviews are on WDSU.com and our mobile app right now. Just make sure you click on the politics tab to see them. Stay with us. We'll be right back.